I designed this whole thing for was I am a member of the Labour Party, but I have announced that I wish to stand for election in uh, some political position in Europe over the next 10 or 15 years. So I give these long lead announcements that, you know, just to test the water. Because, I, you know, I, I, I'm passionate. You might have known I do gigs in French. I'm passionate about Europe. I just believe there's 6.5 billion people in the world, and we have to work out some way to make this whole thing work. And that's what Europe has been doing. Linda, how, you're a sitting MP, yes, MEP. Yeah. And for how long have you been? Yeah, I've been MEP for 11 years 11 for this years. region. So how did you get into politics? Because there are people here who want to get in politics. Are there, there are certain Labour activists here, people who are members of the Labour Party? Yeah, make it, make it, could have noises. <laughs> okay, 12. <laughs> okay, hands up anyone who's uh, Lib Dem. Yeah, let's move here. Anyone Tory? <laughs> no, it's cool. It's cool. People should come in and have a chat, you know, and there were Tory people in, in the last place. So it's all about talking. So it, it's all cool. So how did you get into it? Well, I joined because of the Tories, because I joined the Labour Party the year Mrs. Thatcher became the Prime Minister. Ah. <laughs> and, and how did, where were you? You were a student? Or? No, I was, um, I come from Bradford in West Yorkshire. Yeah. And I joined, well, I tried to join the Labour Party in my sixth form. But nobody got back to me. You know, I sent my form off, nobody got back to me. So I had to wait till I went to University of Scotland. And there we actually created the Labour Club at the university. Right. And, uh, yeah, I've been active since then, since 1980. So you just pushed your way through that thing. I mean, you have yeah. to hustle. It's, it's energy, showing energy and initiative, is, which is going to attract people's attention and get you so that you yeah, can Yeah, I think if you go into politics, because you feel you want to change things. And I think people of all parties who join politics want to do that. They see that... You know, somebody's going to take decisions that govern our lives, and if you don't agree with the ones that you're seeing, you have to get involved to change them. And that's what I felt when the Tories won power in 1979. Are you from Sheffield? Do you live here? I live in yeah, I live in Sheffield as well. And I spent the 19... Well, I, I, when I graduated, I couldn't get a job in 1984. And, I mean, Norman Tebbit's probably history to most people here. But I can well remember him saying, get on your bikes. You can't get a job, get on your bikes. And I left... Um, left Edinburgh as a student, went to Brussels to work and worked there for seven years. And then I came back in 1991 to work in Barnsley in the Coalfield Communities Campaign. And I watched as the Tory government, having closed a hell of a lot of mines in the 1980s after the strike and closed down the steel industry in Sheffield in the 1980s, I watched as they proceeded to close the last mines in Barnsley. And you will know what that meant. You announced on Tuesday afternoon that the last shift will be Friday. You threw tens of thousands of people out of work like that. Unheard of across Europe. Didn't happen in other communities. And if you look at, you know, I, you know, I have my office in Wathapon Derg, in the heart of the mining communities of South Yorkshire. When I look around there, it is transformed in the last, under the Labour government. There is no comparison with the Barnsley, the Rotherham, the Doncaster, the Sheffield that I knew. How would you uh, improve the understanding of the EU? It's really confusing, and I do policy. So, Jack, do you want to start this time? I, I'd like Linda to start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, it's true that the way the EU works, even if you're studying politics, doesn't seem that easy. But I think the way we need to explain it in general is that to me, it's quite simple. There are issues where one country cannot resolve problems on its own anymore. Um, today, there are talks in Germany about the future of General Motors. General Motors is an American company. In Germany, whatever happens in Germany will affect jobs in this country. We have to work with other countries because our companies are global. The world is shrinking. If you go down to Sheffield Station now and jump on the train to London, it takes you just over two hours. If you get on the train to St Pancras, the other end, and go on the train to Brussels, it takes you one hour, 50 minutes. The world is shrinking. It's shorter, in other words, from Brussels to London, London to Brussels, and Sheffield to London. I, I answer it at two levels. I mean, one is, since a lot of the people who are criticising the European Union call up the images of the last war and a proud uh, Britain and all the rest of it, remind people what happened in two world wars, which blighted my parents, your grandparents, and uh, th their parents' generation and killed millions of people across Europe. And for getting on for a thousand years, 
We Europeans were the most violent peoples in the world, and we could only resolve our arguments by war. Uh, and every century there were wars. What I, I was I'm skeptical with a small a small s about some aspects of the of the European Union, but the reason I'm passionate about our membership and what kept me going when I was Foreign Secretary and to put up with tedium beyond belief in meetings was the understanding that what we were doing there was an alternative to violence and war and killing each other. And there really is a great good which has emerged out of the European Union. What I'm saying is that the United Kingdom learning to work together and to explain that, and this is why I'm trying to use my brain that can hold a lot of weird stuff in so I can hopefully put forward the ideas of Europe, which I think are positive, learning to work together. Otherwise, what's the point of civilization? What's the, what's the point of us being on the planet if we're not trying to make it all work? So the people saying pulling out of Europe, it's what we do. Civilization is what we do. That's what I feel. The United Kingdom is a great example of c countries coming together and working together, and we don't lose our identity as well, which is something I've noticed. If you watch the, the Scottish play the English in a football game, the Scottish are rather Scottish and the English are rather English. The English against the Welsh, the Welsh seem to be very... Welsh and the English, you know. And there, that gentleman there. Oh, God, I can't remember who it is. I'd like to put this to uh, Linda. It's a, bit, it's a bit of a simple question, a lot simpler than the European elections speak. Um, I'd just like to ask you, cake or death? <laughs> you, can, you can't ask. <laughs> I would just jump in there and say, do vote, because whatever party you vote for, because of the proportional representation system, we're not saying blues vote Labour, but, you know, I'm encouraging you to, but, and, but, you know, vote for another party other than the BNP, just stop the BNP getting in, and wherever you vote, it counts all around the country, so just do vote.